So hi guys and welcome to this uh, video here or in fact I should say videos because we're gonna make uh, two separate videos on the so-called Traxler counterattack. Um, let me first of all put the position on the board to explain uh, to show what the Traxler counterattack actually is. So it's our usual moves here and after bishop c4 we are still in the two knights defense coverage and white here continues to play this uh, knight attack on f7 and whereas all of the previous lines that we've looked at have involved black covering uh, f7 by um, sort of eliminating the influence of the bishop on that point, in the case of the Traxler counterattack, black actually simply ignores this pawn. Instead, he plays bishop c5 and basically counterattacks, hence why, uh, hence where it takes its name from. And uh, well, the lines in the Traxler counterattack, I have to say, are probably the most complicated lines that we're going to look at in the entirety of this coverage. Uh, the good news for those of you who are um, going to want to play against the Traxler, who are going to play the white side, is that the line that I'm going to recommend in the second video is the move bishop takes f7 check. And I think that this reduces, first of all, I believe it's objectively the best move, but I also think it really heavily reduces the amount of theory that you need to know or the amount of crazy lines that you need to involve yourself with. In my opinion, this move is the sort of um, the bane of existence for Traxler counterattack players. If not for this possibility, if white could only play knight takes f7, then overall Traxler counterattack players would, I think, be very happy. And so this, in fact, is going to represent um, our coverage for video one. And I think here, most of the time, black is going to be the one uh, having the fun. And then in the second part, we're going to cover bishop takes f7, where I think white is really the one getting a big advantage. So let's start talking about knight takes f7. Well, after knight takes f7, uh, this is the most natural move and actually one of the reasons why the Traxler is such a great opening choice at the club level is because uh, most of the time the white player does continue like this. And now black uncorks the move bishop takes f2 check. So this is really incredibly aggressive chess for those of you who like uh, dynamic play. It doesn't get much more dynamic than this. After bishop takes f2 we have to consider two uh, major moves. King e2 doesn't really make sense because for example black could jump in with a check so the two major moves are for white to either play king f1, which um, is a little bit, leaves the king a little bit more sheltered, or to run the gauntlet and capture the bishop on f2. So let's first look at what happens after king takes f2. Black continues with knight takes e4 check. And again, here we have a split. White can go in a variety of directions with his king, but the two most natural moves are either king g1, this is the most commonly played move at the club level, or king e3, which is much more adventurous, but at least has a nice uh, point for white that white does attack this knight on e4. So therefore, white is now already up, up a piece and is attacking the knight, the rook, and the queen. So things look quite good. But of course, the big problem that white faces is that the king here is um, very, very vulnerable. So after king e3, black plays queen h4, defending the knight on e4. And here after queen h4, white cannot afford to take the rook because the queen would have checks on f2 or on f4. You guys can check it for yourselves, but I promise you it will end uh, very badly for the uh, white side. So therefore, white's best move is g3 in this position. And after g3, black takes the pawn on g3 and once again creates some very strong uh, threats of devastating checks. So white again does not have time to capture. He must instead capture this knight. So far so good for white. He's up two pieces. But in fact, after queen d4 check, white's best play is king f3 because if he goes somewhere like king e2, for example, this bishop would fall with check and in turn the knight, as well as the possibility of giving a check here on e4. So instead, 
the white king goes to f3. And now, uh, a beautiful move from black, black castles. And he castles into this x-ray, uh, but unfortunately for white, the knight is pinned to the king, so the knight cannot move. This position is really quite crazy, and even, you know, a player, let's say, uh, at the level that I'm at, which is international master, or even higher levels than this, really could not make complete sense of this position without the help of um, advanced and, and, in fact, very powerful computers. When I was doing my investigations for the Traxler, one of the problems I ran into, which was quite interesting, is that I realized I could not rely on my normal uh, uh, analysis engine, my normal computer running from my laptop, because the lines were so complicated that even the computer, a weak, a relatively weak computer, which still plays much better than basically all human beings on the planet, even this computer was not finding the best moves and was making mistakes when compared with uh, some more advanced computers. So this is perhaps the only chapter out of all my research, perhaps the only chapter where I had to uh, go out of my way to uh, connect to um, much better computers, much stronger computers than, than my own, in order to make sure that I wasn't missing something uh, great. So that's you know that a really testament to the, the complexity of these positions. To return, after castle, white's best move perhaps is rook h4 here. These are really lines that I don't want you guys to remember them. I don't, I would not remember them myself. It's just to satisfy our curiosity mostly, so that we know the kind of craziness that can face both players in the Traxler. Here black would play the move e4 check, best move, and after white's best move, king g2, now uh, black will take this bishop on c4. White plays the move knight g5, and now black returns with the queen to d4, creating threats of check on f2. White covers there with the move queen e2, and black kicks out the knight with h6. White here plays knight takes e4, and now black harasses the knight once again with the move pawn to d5. The knight here can return to uh, c3, and this is one of those positions where my computer was suggesting that black was in fact completely lost. But when I then checked it with a much more powerful computer, it showed that black had equality. So let's take a look at how uh, this even happens. In this position, can you imagine, if, feel free to pause and try to imagine what is the move here that guarantees equality for black. Okay, I'll show the move now. If you haven't found it, I wouldn't beat myself up over it. I certainly wouldn't have found it myself. The move is the brilliant move bishop to h3 check. Black, if we look at the position, was already in this position here, already down a piece, and he just sacrifices another one. And this move almost makes no sense at first sight. But the idea is that if, for example, uh, rook takes h3 were to happen, now the rook is no longer attacking the black queen, and on top of this, the black rook on a8 is now able to enter the game. So the rook, so the rook would come into e8, striking at the queen, and all of this extra material on the queen side is not counting for much, and the white king, missing a couple of the king side pawns, is extremely uh, vulnerable uh, to black's attack. So therefore, uh, white should not capture with the rook. White could capture with the bishop, but amazingly this move is also a mistake. Black would continue with queen g1 and create some very nasty threats connected with moves like rook f2, queen h1 check, or even capturing this undefended bishop on uh, c1. So this is really a very, very bad uh, idea, this move, after, for example, queen e6 check, this position here, king h7, feel free to investigate further, but it's actually just winning for black. So, because of this, uh, white's best move is, in fact, an only move, is to ignore the bishop with king h2. And now black has this possibility of a check on f2. Now, white takes the bishop on h3, and the situation is very good for white, 
because he's picked up another piece and his king seems to be safe here. And black cannot capture the queen without losing his queen in exchange. But it turns out black is okay. Black goes queen f6. Now the queen is uh, under attack. And so no matter what, uh, what white does, there is no way to avoid the draw. One example is knight takes pawn on d5. Again, rook takes queen, knight takes queen. White's material plus would be too significant. But here, black simply gives a check on f5. And after white's best move, which is queen to g4, now black can force a draw. Again, feel free to pause the video if you want to challenge yourself. Black to play has only one way to draw, but it's good enough. And that's the move rook h2 check. King takes h2, queen f2 check. And now, no matter what you do, if you go king h1, I will simply go queen f1 check, king h2, queen f2 check. If you try to go up the board, then queen f1 check, king h2, and queen f2 check. This is really, I mean, computer analysis, strong computer analysis. It's not about memorizing these lines. I think that that's not accessible to, to almost any uh, human chess player. Uh, but it's about trying to get a flavor of just how chaotic the positions can arise. And if you do play these lines as a human, recognize you're not going to play the lines perfectly, but neither are your opponents. The biggest pluses that you can have is have some of the key ideas down and, um, and then after that just try and be a strong tactical player. This is what's going to give you um, uh, make you successful uh, in these crazy lines of the Traxler. So this is um, one of the lines. Let's go back a few steps. So in this position, we just finished looking at the move king e3 uh, with all of the, the craziness that ensued there. And most of the time, white goes king to g1, which is a little bit safer. But even here, black has a draw. After the move queen h4, black creates the threat of queen f2 mate. And white here uh, has nothing better than g3. Now black takes the pawn on g3, sacrificing another piece. If pawn takes g3, then after queen takes g3 check, black will have a series of checks around the unsheltered white king, and there is no way to avoid a draw by repetition. So uh, therefore, the other possibility would be to capture this rook and ignore the knight for now. But in fact here, after the move knight to d4, incredible as it may seem, black um, actually has uh, too many pieces around the white king. And so in spite of all the extra material, there is no way uh, for white to score anything better than a draw here. Uh, white should just accept that he um, is, be is best served by taking the knight. And after queen takes g3 check, king would go to f1, queen would go to f4 check, and no matter where you go with your king, again, you can check it um, independently if you wish, but no matter where you go with your king, um, black can check the white king indefinitely. So this is uh, the king g1 and the king um, e3 lines. And this covers uh, our look at this move king takes f2. So let's put the position uh, that I'm referring to back on the board. So in this position, uh, we have just looked at the move king takes f2 and we can see that no matter what uh, white does, uh, if black plays correctly, then black has at least a draw. White therefore can try to move king f1. This is uh, sort of the, the main option at the higher levels. But even this shouldn't worry uh, the prepared black player too much. The lines are going to get crazy once again. So black here must address the threat against his queen. And so he plays the move queen e7. Now, uh, it wouldn't make sense for white to capture the bishop on f2 if he didn't capture it on the previous move, so instead he captures the rook. Now, if you look at the material, at the moment, uh, black, each side has all minor pieces on the board, but black has lost a rook, so he's down a really tremendous amount of material, but it's his move and the white king is in some trouble. So black continues to play aggressively and opens up lines with the move pawn to d5 involving his bishop in the game and now there start to be ideas around playing bishop to g4 attacking the queen 
or even knight to g4 supporting the bishop and opening up diagonals for the queen for the black queen to get at the white king after d5 white has nothing better than to take the pawn and black centralizes his knight here on d4 now in this position i took a look at not what the master level players were doing but i took a look at what the club level players do in this position and one thing that was very interesting is that the most popular move is c3 so if you're a Traxler counterattack player keep this in mind that more, more often than not this is kind of the human intuitive move that an unprepared player will play and in fact the move is just a losing move after c3 black has the move bishop to g4 attacking the queen white only has the square of a4 and now black simply blocks the check with knight to d7 and all of these pieces in combination with the queen uh, threatening to enter the game actually means that the black attack is uh, irresistible here and white is just uh, completely lost against the multitude of threats let me show you for example um, the possibility of king takes f2 here in this position after king takes f2 black could give a check on h4 and after g3 he would give a check back on f6 and after king e1 he would just play a slow move queen f5 and the position would be uh, completely lost there would be threats like knight to c2 and the threat the devastating threat of giving this check on e4 so overall um, there's nothing nothing at all that uh, that white could do here to prevent uh, the loss so this is just uh, one of the examples that I can um, that I could show you and I think we will we will leave it at that example there are other options but in none in no cases can white save himself I would recommend that you check it out in further detail yourself if you are going to play the Traxler so let's go back and let's uh, set up the position uh, where instead of playing c3 what should white do so I'll set that position up so in this position rather than the losing natural but losing move pawn to c3 white should instead play the move pawn to d6 this move is a clever choice because what it does is it gives back a pawn which is nothing when we consider that white is up a rook but it activates the bishop and so allows white to potentially retreat his knight it also um, disconnects a little bit the uh, placement of the black queen so here black has to uh, spend a move capturing the pawn queen takes d6 and now white goes knight to f7 uh, if for example black had captured the pawn with um, with his own pawn then now white could take the bishop when the absence of certain squares for the queen would actually hurt uh, black quite a bit so black takes with the queen now white plays knight f7 black now plays queen to e7 and here and only here should uh, white challenge this knight on d4 with uh, pawn to c3 uh, black here can continue with the same idea bishop to g4 ignoring the threat if for example you played something passive and you were to bring your knight back now white could indeed start taking pieces and if you're not careful as the black player and the traxler you can find yourself down a lot of material uh, very very quickly or even white here could play move like queen e2 or queen f3 as well so there are many possibilities in general at this point in the traxler it's sort of like in poker terms you've gone all in and you have to continue to play aggressively so bishop g4 queen a4 check this is the only square for the queen knight would go to d7 and here white uh, does capture the bishop on f2 but black has an answer to this he plays queen h4 check and now white goes king to e3 if the white king goes to f1 i should point out that there are uh, a few squares that white king can go to either f1 g1 or e3 uh, also white could block with g3 if white blocks with g3 now this check with no control over f3 is a very very scary check indeed so this is not a good idea for white if on the other hand white goes to g1 then after queen e1 check bishop to f1 
knight e2 would be checkmate. So this is also not a very good option. So that leaves us with two uh, quite legitimate options for white, f1 and e3. If f1, now black actually has only move, but good enough, bishop to h5. This move, it's not about attacking this knight. Instead, it's about creating that standard idea of perpetual check possibilities as, uh, as we saw um, previously, right? So in this case, there's uh, the idea is queen f4 check, and if king e1, then we can check again on e4, and we have a perpetual, while if the king goes to g1, then black could even hope to win with the move knight e2 check, when uh, after bishop takes knight, the white queen would be hanging. So, uh, therefore, after the move bishop h5, uh, there's no good way to prevent uh, the draw by repetition here. If, for example, c takes d4 here, then queen f4 check is a draw. If king goes to g1, then black can capture this pawn on d4. So, uh, this is if the king goes to f1. And if the king goes to e3, then the situation is the same. It's also going to be a draw. Black here, excuse me, the bishop is on g4. So black here has, um, at the very least, I think there may be more than one way to draw here, but uh, I know for a fact that bishop f5 here is, um, is a draw. So again, there are too many pieces around the white king. And so after c takes d4 here, black uh, can play either queen takes d4 or e takes d4 check and uh, there is no way to prevent the draw. For example, if queen takes d4, the king might go to e2 and bishop would go to g4 check. The king has no other square but f1 and now uh, the checks would not stop either on f4, e4 or d4. So um, this basically concludes the first video which has covered the uh, possibility of knight takes f7, which is the most natural and popular move at the club level, and then after bishop takes f2 check, we looked first at what happens if white takes the bishop, and second at what happens if white ignores the bishop. And in both cases, we realized, I think, two things. The first one is that really the lines are absolutely chaotic, and so you need to be a tactical player who likes dynamic positions to play either side of these positions, and the second thing is that with computer-perfect play, um, the objective uh, evaluation of the positions are uh, a draw. Like, the, the games will end in a draw if both sides play perfectly. I believe that the white side can get a nice advantage playing bishop takes f7 instead. And so, let's take a look at that in the second video. But I hope that you enjoyed the madness of this first video. So, see you in the next one.